so the question number 46 says which of the following is against the rules of ICBN? ICBN stands for International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Here the first option given is handwritten scientific names should be underlined. This is correct. Every species should have a generic name and a specific epithet. This is also correct. Now moving to third, uh, specific scientific names are in Latin and should be italicized. This is also correct. And the fourth option says generic and specific names. Generic and specific names should be written starting with small letters. Generic names should be with capital letter. Like we write Mangifera Indica. So we write capital M there. So according, the, according to the question, following is against the rules of ICBN. So here the fourth, fourth option is correct. Question number 47 says mad cow disease in cattle is caused by an organism which has. So this is the basic question which is coming from NCRT biological classification. The first option is inert crystalline. This is wrong. Second is abnormally folded proteins. This disease is caused by prions which are abnormally folded proteins. So we will choose second option. So here the right answer is second. Question number 48 says which of the following statement is correct? We need to select the correct statement. Question number, option number four, 1, lichens do not grow in polluted areas. This is quite correct, lichens do not grow in polluted areas. Let's see other statement. Algal component of lichens is called mycobiont. Algal component is phycobiont, not mycobiont. Third option, fungal component of lichens is called phycobiont. So this should be mycobiont. Now lichens are not good pollution indicators. They are actually good pollution indicators because lichens do not grow in polluted areas. So here the answer goes 1. Question number 49 says match the organism in column 1 with habitats in column 2. So column 1 has some type of organisms and column 2 has uh, the habitats. So first of all this question is from uh, biological classification and solely NCRT based. Now A is halophile, B is thermoacidophile, C is methanogen and D is cyanobacteria. Halophiles live in salty areas so we should opt A for 4. Now B thermoacidophiles. Thermoacidophiles are the bacteria uh, which can uh, live at high temperature. So we will choose hot springs. Now methanogens. Methanogens uh, uh, live guts of ruminants. So we will choose C for 3. Now cyanobacteria. They live in aquatic environment. So D goes with 2. So we need to select option according to that A, 4, Okay, only one option is standing with A4, so we don't have to check further. So answer is 1. Now question number 50 says, in the dicot root, the vascular cambium originates from. This question is from anatomy and solely NCRT based. Here the first option says, tissue located below the phloem bundles and a portion of pericycle tissue above protoxylum. They are actually trying to ask that vascular cambium in the case of dicot root actually arises from which tissue. Two tissues will be responsible for that. One is conjunctive tissue which is located below the phloem. So first half of the statement is correct. Now moving to the second half of the statement and a portion of the pericycle tissue above protoxylum. So here what happens? One part of vascular cambium is taken from conjunctive tissue which is lying below the phloem bundles and another part of conjunctive uh, vascular cambium is taken from uh, pericycle tissue which is above protoxylum. So this statement is quite correct. We should uh, check other options as well as well. Cortical region. So this is wrong. Parenchyma between endodermis and pericycle. This is again wrong. Endodermis is not a part of steel. So it cannot give rise uh, vascular cambium. Fourth is intrafascicular and interfascicular tissue in a ring. These are the features of stem, not of root. So we will choose the option first here. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 51 वन सेज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग शोज वर्ल्ड फाइलोटेक्सी रिमेंबर दिस इज ऑल्सो फ्रॉम एन सी आर टी फाइलोटेक्स इज अरेंजमेंट ऑफ लीव्स एंड वर्ल्ड मीन्स फ्रॉम अ सिंगल पॉइंट सो मेनी लीव्स आर गेटिंग अराइज सो दिस इज वट वर्ल्ड मीन्स हेयर द ऑप्शन आर मस्टर्ड चाइना रोज एल्स्टोनिया एंड कैलोट्रॉपिस सो एन सी आर टी क्लियरली राइट्स एल्स्टोनिया यू कैन सी एल्स्टोनिया इन द इन डेकोरेशन पर्पजेज सो हेयर द एंसर गोज एल्स्टोनिया Question number fifty-two says uh, regeneration of damaged growing grass following grazing is largely due to. There are the options of few meristem. One is lateral meristem, another is apical, third is intercalary, fourth is secondary meristem. So for the growth purposes, we cannot use secondary meristem and lateral meristem. Here the answer is in between apical and intercalary meristem. So intercalary meristem is the basic meristem which is used for regeneration in grasses. so the answer goes is third question number 53 says bicarpillary ovary with obliquely placed septum is seen in this question is based on family from morphology so let's see uh, first uh, thing is bicarpillary ovary so we need to see that gynoecium with two carpels now we have three families uh, which are uh, discussed in detail one is uh, fabaceae another one is solanaceae and third one is liliaceae in solanaceae we have two carpels so the basic option we need to choose from solanaceae another feature is given is obliquely placed septum so this is the feature of solanaceae family and uh, we are given option one is brassica this belongs to brassicaceae family and it does not has obliquely placed septum so we are leaving it moving to next option this is aloe uh, and it comes from liliaceae and it has three carpels in it so we are leaving it and uh, third is solanum solanum belongs to solanaceae family which has bicarpillary ovary as well as obliquely placed septum now moving to fourth sesbania it belongs to fabaceae family and fabaceae family does not has bicarpillary bicarpillary ovary and obliquely placed septum so here the answer goes is 3 Question number fifty-four says, which is the most common type of embryo sac in angiosperm? They are asking the common type of angiosperm. Although all uh, embryo sac in angiosperm, although all type of embryo sac can occur. So here first is tetrasporic with one mitotic stage of division, monosporic with three sequential mitotic divisions, monosporic with two sequential mitotic division, and bisporic with two sequential mitotic divisions. So first of all, what is the difference between tetrasporic, monosporic, and bisporic? Monosporic means a single functional megaspore will give rise to female gametophyte. So in the case of most of the angiosperm we see that only one functional megaspore give rise to the female uh, embryo sac so here monosporic will be chosen so we are leaving the option first and fourth now we are left with option second and third the second says monosporic with three sequential mitotic division and third says monosporic with two sequential mitotic division so in the first uh, second option this is correct because uh, in the case of female gametophyte formation the uh, female uh, the functional megaspore will undergo three sequential mitotic division because of that eight cells will arise and they will form the embryo sac so i am choosing option second here Question number fifty-five says, from the following, identify the correct. We need to select the correct statement, and it's regarding genetic code. So these are the features of genetic code. So first of all, just remember, genetic code is nearly universal. So we'll have to pick the statement which says it is universal. Okay. So everyone is saying universal except four. Now the second option, second thing we need to remember, genetic code is not overlapping. Like if we are reading genetic code, it, this is not overlapping. It it will be read it, uh, it will be read in a frame of three uh, nucleotides at a time. So here, uh, known overlapping will be the option. Uh, so known overlapping and overlapping will uh, delete it. Will delete it. So we are left with uh, two options: universal, ambiguous, degenerate. degenerate non overlapping and non ambiguous so now we we'll, we need to discuss what is degenerate 
degenerate means uh, a single amino acid can be coded by multiple codons so this is a feature of genetic code so degeneracy is uh, right and ambiguous ambiguous says that a single codon can code more than one amino acid which is wrong our genetic code is unambiguous at a time a uh, uh, codon will be coding only one amino acid so we'll choose non ambiguous here and degeneracy non overlapping and non ambiguous so the answer which is correct is 4 so question number 56 which scientist experimentally proved that dna is the sole genetic material in bacteriophage so this is again ncert based simple question first is bedel and totem and it should be tatum uh, this is uh, wrong misselson and stall they gave the conservative mode of re uh, replication hershey and chase this is correct they used bacteriophage and they uh, uh, they just showed that uh, genetic material of bacteriophage is dna and jacob and monod they are not related with this so i am choosing option 3 here number one please in the process of transcription in eukaryotes the rna polymerase one transcribe so rna polymerase one kya transcribe karega so we have three types of rna polymerases one two and three one transcribes r rna two transcribes mrna and three transcribes trna okay so here we are left with the options mrna so we will delete it because they are asking rna polymerase one and then trna we will delete it because they are asking rna polymerase one so we are left with ribosomal rnas 28s 18s and 5.8 these are the ribosomal rna of eukaryotes so the i'll choose answer is Question number fifty-eight says, in which genetic condition each cell in the affected person has three sex chromosomes? So X X Y uh, situation they are asking. This is a chromosomal aberration in which a male gets one X chromosome also along with Y. So here the gynecomastia term you have read in NCERT. So thalassemia no, Klinefelter syndrome. This is the correct answer. Phenyl ketonuria no, Turner syndrome no. so i'll choose option 2 question number 59 says what initiation and termination factors are involved in transcription in eukaryotes so here they are asking about the termination and initiation factors of transcription and that too of eukaryotes but here the factors which are given they are of prokaryotes so this question is actually wrong but we can choose option according to prokaryotes so for prokaryotes the initiation factor is sigma and uh, uh, termination factor is rho so sigma and rho bonus so s and r so it should be sigma and rho so this is the question which is bonus Okay question number 61 says the production of gametes by the parents the formation of zygotes the f1 and the f2 plants can be understood using aapko ye sari cheeze samajhni hai and we need to have what pi diagram no a pyramid diagram no punnett square yes this is the right answer punnett square and venn diagram no this is again wrong so i'll choose option 3 So question number sixty-two says match the column one with column two. So here column one is carrying some uh, cell organelles and column two their function. So Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus is the organelle which is involved in glycosylation and glycosidation. Glycosylation basically causes formation of glycoprotein and glycosidation causes formation of glycolipids. So A goes with three. now lysosome these are the suicidal bags of the cell and they'll be used in digestion of biomolecules so because it carries hydrolytic enzymes so we'll match b with 4 now vacuoles vacuoles actually trap waste and excretory products so c is going with 2 and ribosomes are involved in the synthesis of protein uh, during uh, protein uh, translation so d is matched with 1 so according to that we can see uh, the option 1 is going a with 3 b with 4 c with 2 and d with 1 so i am choosing option 1 as in right answer so question number 64 says crossing over takes place between which chromatids and in which stage of the cell cycle 
Okay, crossing over is the event which actually takes place in picketing. So here option one says non-sister chromatids of non-homologous chromosome. There will be homologous chromosome. So because of this, I am deleting this option. Now non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosome. This is correct. At picketing stage of prophase one, this is also correct. So this can be the answer. Now moving to third option, non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosome. This is again cor correct. At zygotene stage of prophase one. So this portion is actually wrong. Zygotene stage of prophase one. Now we will delete this as well. Moving to option four, non-sister chromatids. Of non-homologous chromosome, so these non-homologous chromosome, this is wrong. So we'll delete it, and the right answer is second. So question number sixty-six says, which of the following is not a feature of active transport of solutes in plants? Active transport. So we need to keep in mind this term, active transport. Option one says. Occurs against concentration gradient. So this is a feature. We need to select a feature which does not belong to active transport. This is non-selective. Actually, active transport depends on uh, carrier proteins and pumps. So this is highly selective. So this is not a feature. Option three occurs through membrane. So this occurs through membrane. This is a feature, and it requires ATP as it. Is going against the concentration of uh, concentration gradient, so actually it requires ATP. So they were asking which is not a feature. So non-selective is not a feature. So the answer is second. So here question number sixty-seven says, which of the following bacteria reduce nitrate in soil into nitrogen? So they are talking about denitrification. The bacteria of denitrification are Thiobacillus and Pseudomonas. So uh, option two says Thiobacillus. So this is correct answer, and this is again factual question from NCERT. Which what will be the direction of flow of water when a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution? A plant cell is kept in a hypotonic solution. So hypotonic solution will have more water and less concentration of solutes. And if a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, definitely the amount of water will be going from outside to inside of the cell. So let's check the options. Water will flow in both directions. This is wrong. Water will flow out of the cell. This is wrong. Water will flow into the cell. So this is correct. No flow of water in any direction. So this is wrong. So uh, the correct answer is three. Question number sixty-nine says, "Where is the respiratory electron transport system located in plants?" So they are actually asking the compartment where ETS occurs. So the first option is mitochondrial matrix. No, there is a mitochondrial matrix. There will Krebs cycle be occurring. Outer mitochondrial membrane. No, inner mitochondrial membrane. All the complexes of ETS are actually arranged in inner mitochondrial membrane. So the correct answer is three. In Hatch and Slack pathway, the primary carbon dioxide acceptor is first option is oxaloacetate, second is phosphoglycerate, third is phosphoenol pyruvate, and fourth is Rubisco. Rubisco is an enzyme. They are asking a substrate. So this is something which is wrong with uh, respect to question. Now oxaloacetate is a four carbon compound, but it is not the primary acceptor. The primary acceptor is a three carbon compound, which is phosphoenol pyruvate. So the right answer is three. Question number seventy-one says removal of shoot tips in a very useful technique to boost the production of tea leaves. This is because okay, they are saying that we are removing shoot tips. So how come it will actually boost the production of tea leaves? Uh, first is gibberellins prevent blot, bolting and are inactivated so here when the concept of shoot tip removal comes we just need to focus on apical dominance apical dominance 
which is because of auxins. So we need to focus on the uh, on the options which are based on auxins. So option two says auxins prevent leaf drop at early stages. No. Actually, what happens? Uh, uh, auxin is synthesized in uh, shoot tips, and if you are removing shoot tips, you are basically overcoming the apical dominance. The apex will not be growing. Now, the lateral branches uh, will be growing. So, if the lateral branches are growing, the number of leaves are going to be more. So, this is somehow will be helping to boost the production of tea leaves. So, here the option second is wrong, and third is effect of auxin is removed, and growth of lateral buds is enhanced. This is is somehow supporting our concept so the correct answer is 3 question number 72 says one scientist cultured cladophora which is an algae in a suspension of azotobacter and illuminated the culture by splitting light through a prism so azotobacter is an aerobic bacteria he observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the region of. So, this is an experiment which was conducted by T. W. Engelman. So, here they are doing, they have taken uh, one aerobic suspension of azotobacter. So, this is culture of azotobacter and here they are having cladophora. So, cladophora is an algae and it will photosynthesize. Here, there is a prism and light is passed from prism. It will be splitted in whip gear. So, seven components of light will be spread to cladophora. Here, the cladophora will have carbon dioxide in the culture. It will utilize that carbon dioxide and it will photosynthesize. During the process of photosynthesis, oxygen is released. Now, the oxygen, uh, wherever the oxygen is released, the aerobic bacteria, azotobacter, will go and accumulate there. So, they have seen that, uh, that aerobic bacteria, azotobacter, accumulated in blue and red regions, which was saying that the blue and red light is the main region of the uh, white light which actually which is actually important for photosynthesis so here the answer goes blue and red light question number 73 says in order to increase the yield of sugarcane crop which of the following plant growth regulators should be sprayed? So, this is again from NCRT. Uh, here the answer is gibberellins. If we uh, spray our crop with uh, sugarcane crop with gibberellin, uh, the production increases 20 turns per acre. So, the correct answer is 3. Question number 74. Uh, what type of pollination takes place in Valles Nerea? Okay. So, here the option 1 is pollination occurs in submerged condition by water. Okay. So, we need to keep in mind that we are talking about Valisneria, which is pollinated by water. So, we will delete the options which are not carrying the option of water. So, here they are discussing insects, we will delete it. Here they are in discussing wind, we will delete it. So, we are left with two options, 1 and 4. The first option says pollination occurs in submerged condition by water. The Wallis Neria has male flower and female flower on different plants. So, male gamete is carried by water and female flower will come up at the surface of water and will get, tho get those gametes. So, here the option 4 says male flowers are carried by water currents to female flowers at surface of water. So, this at surface of water actually says that Wallis Neria has epihydrophily. So, the option 4 is correct. Okay, question number 75 says, in which one of the following both autogamy and gaitanogamy are prevented? So, autogamy basically a flower has male and female part both and uh, the uh, female part is getting pollinated by the male part. So, from the single flower we are telling autogamy and gaitanogamy uh, the two flowers are in contact and they belong to the same plant. So, if flower of the same plant are uh, involved in pollination, so, th so this is called gaitanogamy. Here, uh, the options which are given, one is wheat, second is papaya, third is castor and fourth is maize. So, papaya is the plant which has male and female flower on different plants. 
So the right answer is papaya. So it won't have uh, autogamy as well as gaitanogamy. Question number 76. Match the placental types column 1 with their examples column 2. So this belongs to morphology and all the examples are from NCRT. Here the column 1 says A basal. Basal placentation is found in sunflower and marigold. So we are getting an option of sunflower here. I have matched A with 4. Now exile placentation. Exile placentation will be found in China rose, tomato, lemon. So here China rose was there. So I have matched exile with China rose. Parietal placentation is found in mustard, argimone, cucumber. So we are having mustard here. Free central placentation is found in primrose and dianthus. So I am having dianthus here. So according to this, A should be matched with 4. So there is only one option where A is matching with 4. We don't have to see much. So the option third is right. Question number 78 says, Western Ghats have a large number of plant and animal species that are not found anywhere else. Okay, so they have specified something which is found in a region which is not found anywhere else. So this is the definition of endemism. Endemism says that a species which is confined to a single area. So we will choose here endemic. We don't have to think much here. Question number 79 says, which of the following statements about ozone is correct? They are asking us the correct statement. So first statement is tropospheric ozone protects us from UV radiations. Actually there are two types of ozone. One is good ozone and another is bad ozone. So the tropospheric ozone is actually a pollutant. So it cannot be good or it cannot protect us from UV radiation. So the option one is wrong and as well as tropospheric ozone should be bad, this is wrong. And stratospheric should be good. So this is also wrong. Now option 4 is left and here it is written stratospheric ozone protects us from UV radiation which is correct. So the right answer is 4. Question number 80 says exploration of molecular genetic and species level diversity for novel products of economic importance is known as. So this is a definition of bioprospecting. So the answer 4 is right. So question number 81 says, which of the following is an innovative remedy for plastic waste? So this is something which is mentioned in uh, NCRT in the chapter environmental issues. So here the first option is burning in the absence of oxygen, no. Burning 500 meter deep soil, uh, deep below soil surface, again no for plastic waste. They are uh, asking about plastic waste. Third is poly blend. So here the story regarding Ahmed Khan. So he was a person who actually uh, made a poly blend and this poly blend uh, was uh, developed from plastic waste and by mixing it with bitumen many roads are laid. So uh, this was a story regarding Ahmed Khan and according to that answer will be 3. Question number 82 says between which among the following the relationship is not an example of commensalism. So they are asking which one is not an example of commensalism. So here uh, starting with one orchid and the tree on which it grows. Commensalism means one species is getting benefited and other is neutral. Uh, so the first option orchid and the tree on which it grows. So it is commensalism. Second cattle aggregate and grazing cattle. So this is again commensalism. Third, sea animal and clone fish. The, this is again commensalism and all these examples are mentioned in NCRT. Now moving to fourth, female wasp and fig species. So here this is mutualism. So the answer is fourth. So question number 83 says, if an agricultural field is liberally irrigated, for a prolonged period of time, it is likely to face a problem of. So here the field are given so much of water. What will happen? Either water will evaporate or it will go into underlying underground water. So ultimately the salt is left, it will cause salinity. So the right answer is for salinity. Okay, question number 85 says, in moon bean resistance to yellow mosaic virus and powdery mildew, were brought about by. 
Okay. So first option is mutation breeding, second is biofortification, third is tissue culture, fourth is hybridization and selection. So the mutation breeding is the right answer. The reason for that is here they are asking uh, the resistance which is very specific. So in mutation breeding what is done? Actually uh, the selective uh, traits are being selected by uh, which are created by mutation. So first answer should be correct. Now moving to the next biofortification. This is nothing but enrichment of food. So uh, like we increase the nutritional value of food. So biofortification cannot be the answer. Tissue culture, this is a process which is used in many things. So this cannot be the correct answer. And fourth is hybridization and selection. But in the case of moon bean, this was solely done by mutation breeding. So the answer is one.